Unincorporated communities are essentially places that are not part of a city, so they don't get the services that a city might provide, like police or sewer service or even water in some instances. For example, in Riverside County, there are some unincorporated communities in Mecca and Thermal that are still using cesspools. It's dug into the ground for wastewater several hundred feet away from mobile home parks. And when I say wastewater, I mean raw sewage. One community that I visited specifically, it's called Rancho Garcia, and there was a couple there that I met, the Duartes. They had been living there for several years, living in a pretty ramshackle apartment. And the wastewater system is very mysterious there. It was built with septic tanks, two houses per septic tank. But over time, the community has gotten more dense, and the wastewater system just hasn't kind of kept pace with what's needed there. So as a result, there's a lot of backup into toilets and homes. On the day that I visited the Duartes, it was a very hot May afternoon, and some wastewater began to just spurt from the ground. A shallow pipe had broken, and there was essentially a wastewater fountain. They tend to get a lot of backup of other people's sewer water into their shower. Alicia Duarte told me that sometimes she can only really take two-minute showers or less because that's when the water starts to back up, and she doesn't like the idea of standing in other people's wastewater. She has a pretty sizable sore on her leg that she thinks won't heal because of the wastewater. It's a pretty stark situation when it comes to health. I think what, what's always struck me about this story is the way in which California is such a resource-rich state. It's the home of Silicon Valley. It's a place where there's so much technology and growth and modernity, but there are places in California that are overlooked and that kind of get stuck in almost a bygone era. And they've just, through reasons related to politics and money, haven't received the kinds of modern upgrades that you might expect. So in the very worst cases, there are individuals who are essentially living in developing world conditions. Parkland is an unincorporated island that's surrounded by the city of Modesto. And what that means for the residents there is that even though they could literally cross the street and suddenly find themselves in the city of Modesto, they don't receive any services from the city of Modesto. I'm talking about things like sidewalks, storm drainage, sewer service, things that are really kind of modern day amenities. During heavy rains, streets get flooded and kids are jumping over puddles to get to the school bus. There are sewer lines that run on various sides of the community, but they can't tap into them because they're city sewer lines, and Parkland is not part of the city. Jose and Hortensia Franco have been living in Parkland for decades, and they feel that part of the reason that they've been excluded from the city is because there's some racial discrimination. Hortensia was part of a lawsuit that made that claim. In the end, they didn't win that lawsuit outright, but it's something that residents feel is at play. I'd have to say that if there is any overarching similarity between all of the communities, it's that they tend to be communities that are politically disenfranchised. So they tend to be low income, often monolingual Spanish speakers, and sometimes undocumented. One strategy for improving some of the infrastructure in unincorporated communities has come from the bottom up. So a lot of the residents in places like Park Lawn, in Modesto, like various other places across the state, there's been an effort by the, the residents to get more civically engaged and more politically active and begin to demand the kinds of services that they'd like to see. In Matheny Tract, which is a small community just outside of the city of Tulare in the Central Valley, there have been some improvements that have been made as a result of the community members getting together and talking and going to county board of supervisor meetings and just getting more civically and politically involved. 
looks like they'll be able to connect to city water in the next year or so, and then hopefully sewer service will come online after that.